What's up, Ego Hackers? Welcome to the show. We are back and we have our new guest, Miss Bella. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the show. It's, uh, it's been so fascinating. We just did Haley, now it's your turn, and I'm really excited. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, so, so introduce yourself to the audience, please. Uh, let us know about you, what you do, what's your thing, what you like, you know, anything. I'm Bella. I work as a paraprofessional at Kootenai. Um, so a I care professional? Paraprofessional. So I work with special needs kids. Okay, that's cool. Um, I love books. I love reading and art. And how, did, how did you get started in that career anyway? Like what? what? <laughs> so, oh, long story. I originally worked, I worked at a butcher shop beforehand and then I got fired and I took my little sister to school one day and went in to say hi to all my old teachers and they were hiring so I went down there in my pajamas and put in an application and just, just straight up yeah all right cool so what are some of the challenges that you've encountered in uh, with with your work with your line of work um I get burnout out pretty easy Why? Um, I work as a one-on-one -on -one right now so I'm with one specific student and even when I'm not it's just it's really demanding at times um, and sometimes there's like you get to see into like kids' homes lives kind of, and it's hard to forget that once the day's over. Um, I don't know, it just takes a lot of energy. Just a lot of energy, taking huh? Taking care of children and teaching them, because for the most part, I um, work well, what do you, with what do you, elementary kids. Okay, elementary, yeah. so that's the age group. Okay, so, so what do you like teach them, like motor skills, or are um, we talking like? For the most part, um, there are some kids that just have IEPs, so just IEPs, okay. um, things like that help them with schoolwork, but for the most part, um, with the student I'm with, it's like motor skills and things like that that he can use when he gets older if he can't have a job. When he gets older, yeah. trying to get a job. Okay, well that's cool. That's that's uh, that's absolutely fantastic. All right, so so on to the reading. Yeah, we love this. All right, so you're all about what everyone thinks. You know what everyone's <laughs> thinking all the time. My status, my reputation is everything to me. Mm -hmm. What people think about me is really important. And you're always aware of everyone else's thinking judgments, their true false judgments. You'd be like, okay, yeah, obviously that guy's stupid. He don't know what he's <laughs> talking about. You know, yeah, I totally get it. Always aware of your comfort, but guess what? Your comfort is such that you are a really hard worker if you really want to be. <laughs> All about your comfort, what makes you comfortable. You really like to feel safe and be safe and to the point where you actually enforce safety on other people because they need to be safe as often as possible which is a lot of fun in of its own right. Mm -hmm. You're like the safety hall monitor of the world, <laughs> let's be honest. And you, all, you always are aware of the rules, the particular structure, and helping people, reminding them the rules so they do follow the rules, etc. You know, you'd make a really good manager oh, no. since you like bring <laughs> order to chaos every single day of your life, and you don't like chaos. Chaos no. is just not your thing. So you bring things into order. So I like, you know, hey, I have the specific outcome I'm going for, but it need to get the proper order so I get that outcome that I'm looking for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one thing that's super childish about you is that you love to be wanted. You like to be chosen. Yeah. Yes, yes, wanted and chosen. But also, you like to give people choices. You like to give people freedom. So you go up to Haley and be like, hey, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you want, Haley? What do you want to do? Always giving Haley choices and Haley's like, oh yeah, I love me some choice. <laughs> yes, give me more freedom, more choices. You're, all, you're like you're like Miss Options. I gotta give <laughs> options to everybody. So you're like the, the option generator of the group, I'm sure. So you love you giving some options, and then uh, no, no, that's her. <laughs> no, no, she's she's leading with what she wants to do. Like, oh, I want to do this. And you're like, okay, because you're just happy to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, you're just happy to be like taking along for the ride. You you know, it's like, hey, I, I'll go do whatever. You know, it's no mm -hmm. problem. It works out just fine. However, the part of you that's so sensitive, the sensitive, most sensitive, is that you're afraid that you're not a good person. You're afraid that you're not good enough. You're afraid that you're not worthy enough. Yeah, but you are. That's the thing. That's the thing. You constantly are afraid that you're not good enough. You're constantly afraid of your own self-worth on a regular basis and trying to work hard, so hard, to be a good person. So what this ends up doing is that this ends up giving you the opportunity to learn principles. It's why you read so much. You're trying to find the principles behind success so that you could create a system or a process or a procedure you could follow to be successful in your life. 
and then you understand that it's your duty to share that with other people so that you don't have to be afraid of being a bad person anymore because you struggle with that fear every single day of your life. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry you have to deal with that. I'm so sorry. It's okay. But I think you're a good person. It's really nice that you go out of your way for these special needs kids and take on that role. There's not very many people out there that would give that opportunity. I know somebody in my life who is in a, a fifth grader body who, has, who is mentally in second grade. And even with a slight amount of cerebral palsy, and it's really rough on that child. And knowing that there's people like you in the world, that gives me hope. Because that's what you do. You give people hope. My job. Yeah, you <laughs> give people hope, and that's what, and so so you don't have to like walk around feeling like a bad person all the time. You just don't. You don't have to be afraid of that anymore. You really just just accept just accept it. Just accept that. Yeah, I am a good person, and I'm working on getting better. And then as you get older, once you discover the principles for success over time, you'll become this amazing philosopher where anyone will be able to ask you, "Hey, what's your opinion?" Your opinion will be so valuable because you'll be able to tell them exactly which principles to follow. Like, uh, so like I'd recommend, so you know Marcus Aurelius, he wrote uh, Meditations, he's like the yep. king of Stoicism. Yep. He's just like you. So learn Stoicism. Mm -hmm. Stoicism was actually one of the few philosophies in Greece that was actually taught to women. Mm -hmm. I really believe you need to own that. Own Stoicism. Like seriously study it as much as possible. I also recommend reading Ward Farnsworth. Right? I've heard of that. Ward Farnsworth uh, did a book on Stoicism. He also wrote the book Socratic with his analysis of Socrates. Very exquisite reads. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, if you invest in Marcus Aurelius as well as Ward Farnsworth, you'll be able to upgrade your principles and then you'll have to deal with a lot less of that insecurity as to whether or not, you know, oh, I'm a bad person or I'm not good enough and not worthy enough. Because the reality of the situation is you are, especially the more that you read and develop your own personal philosophy and your own principles. Mm -hmm. Because you know at the end of the day, that is what actually has value. Because to you, you are this, you are a philosopher, but you're trying to find the principles of success so you have this little I won button that you can always press so that you win at life, you know? That's just who you are, you gotta get that knowledge <laughs> to do it. That's oh. all good, so do it. But what you worry about? You worry that you're stupid. You worry that about what you, no, and that what you know is not actually true. That's why you're constantly asking everybody what they think and picking everyone's brains or doing an insane amount of research as well as reading a ton of books. Yeah, you pick Haley's brain all the time, you know, and then as a result of that, like you're able then to confirm what you know mm -hmm. because you know what you don't know, but you don't know what you do know. That's the struggle. Wow. Yeah. That's the struggle. So that's where that worry comes from. But here's the thing. Let me tell you, Haley. It's okay. Bella. It's Bella. Er, <laughs> Bella. Excuse me. <laughs> let me let me tell you something. Uh, it's okay. It's okay for you to know what you don't know because, like Socrates said, right? Uh, he said, you know, the only thing that I know is that I truly know nothing, right? That's a really healthy perspective, mm -hmm. an extremely healthy perspective. So I highly recommend that you actually lead with that in your life mm -hmm. because what you don't know is just leaves discovery. You get the opportunity to discover the truth. And once you discover what the truth actually is, it helps you sharpen and refine your principles to help you get over that fear of whether or not you're good enough or a good person or worthy enough, because you are. As long as you put your effort into the right place, mm -hmm. right? It's super important. Now, you're very critical towards the outward appearance of other people to the point where you could be a little shallow about it, where it's like, oh, they has a, oh, he's not credible. He's got his shoes on tight. Oh, he's got some <laughs> schmutz on his suit. Yeah, he's obviously a loser or whatever, you know? And then so as a result of that, you kind of just decide to not listen to them or give them the time of day if they are a little unkept mm -hmm. here or there because you have a tendency to judge a book by its cover especially when it comes to people. Projecting my own insecurities on Yeah, others. well, because you are very critical <laughs> towards your own personal performance. You want to become a uh, top performer. You're like the female version of Tom Brady, let's be honest. You know, so, so based on that, based on that, uh, you need to like, kind of let go of that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just understand that no one's going to be a top performer like you and you really can't be projecting this insanely high performance standard that you hold yourself to, that you, even you cannot even meet <laughs> onto other people. It's not right. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Give them a chance. So when you actually look at a book or a person, open the book 
read some pages in. Don't judge a book by a cover. Mm -hmm. Like seriously, don't do that. You'll be way more successful in life and it'll give you the opportunity to discover additional principles. One of my favorite hobbies is, as you guys have already figured out, talking to strangers. Mm -hmm. You know, I love talking to strangers, right? It's my favorite thing. It's always because you never know what's behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. And being willing to take the risk to discover is important. Now, the thing that you're entirely unaware of, one of your weaknesses, you have no idea what you want at all. Oh. You don't know what you want. You, uh, you rely on other people. You'd be like, I don't, don't ask me what I want. What do you want? You know, all the time. All the time. Yeah, because you're not aware of what you want. And that, uh, that too, can, uh, can be a little problematic yeah. for you, you know? <laughs> so so watch, out for, watch out for that. Here's the thing, too. Like, when you, go, when you go buying something, like on a car lot or whatever, you don't want to get taken a ride by the car salesman. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So don't do it by yourself. When you're making big decisions for your life, don't do it by yourself. Ask other people what they think. Ask other people if it's a decision that they would make and why. Why would you make that decision? That way you could protect yourself from this weakness of not actually knowing what you want. Because from your perspective, I can have it all. I can want all the things. The problem is, is that choosing is really hard for you. It's really hard. You often would be rather told what to do instead of actually being forced to make a choice on your own. So don't make choices by yourself mm -hmm. until such time you realize like, hey, I'm strong enough that I can make any choice. I'm strong enough that I can make a choice and that regardless of whatever consequences, good or bad, I can handle it. And that's one of the ways that you can prove to yourself that you are a good person, that you are a person of value, of great value, where you actually become the most valuable person who walks the earth, able to guide the other people's thinking and able to give other people a better future. That is your purpose after all. Then the worst part about you, the absolute worst, you don't give a flying fuck about what people, how people feel at all. She cares about her feelings, and her feelings matter the most. She doesn't really care about how other people feel. Their values. Their values don't mean anything, because their values could be corrupt. You're trying so hard to be a good person that it really bothers you when you see people lacking in principles, where they're not willing to do the right thing. Okay. And that's who you are. And you're, very, you're like, I, you can't be in my life. You have like this really bad vibe, because it's like... Dude, your principles are screwed up. The thing Princi is, yeah, right. it's easy for you to assume that people have bad principles mm -hmm. by default. Don't assume that. Give them a chance. You know, because here's the thing. You can create a system for a procedure or do make a plan. Hey, yeah, it's easy for you to follow. But here's mm -hmm. the problem. They're human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so easy. A monkey can do it, right? But they're human. You got to remember the human factor. So remember the golden rule, right? Treat others the way you want to be treated. Which means if you're somebody who wants to be given an additional chance because, you know, sometimes you might fail or sometimes, oh, I made a, you know, I, I thought I liked this thing and then it turned out like there was something wrong with my character. I need to be a better character. You got to allow people to have the opportunity to have bad character sometimes because they're on the same journey you are to develop their character, to increase their worthiness, to increase their self.